Hello and welcome to the Non Fungible Show. This is your host, Non Fungible TC, Non Fungible Today, and Non Fungible Tomorrow. So, today's topic is bridging traditional with contemporary digital ownership and experiences. In this video, I would like to share more about what brands and what traditional companies has been doing with regards to the metaverse, NFTs, web 3.0, and to share my thoughts on it with you. So to start off, uh, a big congratulations to the NFT community. Uh, NFT beats Shaggy, which is a word, uh, to be Collins Dictionary Word of the Year. So according to this article by Guardian, uh, it is a year that, you know, NFT makes it voice uh, within the dictionary world. For this year, uh, the top word is actually NFT. And it is interesting um, because if you look at this, uh, you can see there are other top words uh, by Collins for 2021. The first one which is NFT, which is what we are all very familiar with if we are within the space, which is non-fungible token, a digital unique certificate registered in a blockchain that is used to record ownership for an asset such as an artwork or a collectible. And Shaggy, which is the one that NFT overran, it means no longer regarded as cool or fashionable. And um, it is interesting uh, that NFT is now the top trending word and it is also the reason why Collins had used it as the number one word. Uh, but it is also interesting if you look at the other top 10 words about you know what people are thinking. Uh, the third word is actually crime anxiety. Uh, the fourth word is crypto, vax, uh, hybrid working, metaverse, neo pronoun. So I think this is a very interesting article because it shows that what the world is you know looking at. Another exciting news I want to share today uh, hits home because uh, this is from SCMP, which is uh, a newspaper company that is based in Hong Kong. Uh, it is a very historic newspaper company with more than 118 years of history. So they decided to come up with an NFT collectible, which is called Artifacts by SCMP. So Artifacts by SCMP are collectible NFTs from the South China Morning Post 118 years of archives. Discover and own moments in history with this unique NFT collection and join a community that is preserving history on a blockchain. And uh, this is SMP uh, being a very traditional newspaper company in the past decided to you know go digital with uh, their online newspaper subscription and now they're entering into web 3.0 which is uh, you know dabbling their feet into NFT creation. So let's have a look at the Q&A. Uh, so what are artifacts? Artifacts are NFTs, non-fungible tokens of accounts of history or historical asset that capture the historical context and significance with the artifact metadata standard and smart contract. Artifact can be of many types of assets such as a single news story, a newspaper cover, an infographic, a photo, a video clip, or an audio clip. To name just a few, the Artifact Metadata Standard is developed by South China Morning Post and a council of cross-discipline experts representing leading institutions in art, culture, and media, research, and technology. It means that they are trying to develop a metadata standard that would live on a blockchain related to their um, newspaper archives, and it could be in different format. And so what are artifacts by SMP? Artifacts by SMP are tokenized media assets from SMP's 118 years of archives using the artifact metadata standard and smart contract. Through artifacts by SMP, we will be opening our journalism to decentralized ownership for the first time ever and seeding a community and ecosystem built around the preservation of history on the blockchain. So this is indeed very exciting because uh, what is on the blockchain is immutable and supposedly theoretically it could live forever so they're trying to put you know their archive onto the blockchain and developing a standard with industry professionals which i will share later and uh, so how can i collect artifact by smp in our upcoming first drop artifacts by smp will be available for purchase in the form of mystery packs containing randomized bundles of a set number of artifacts collectors can purchase artifacts by smp through primary sales directly on the smp website you will have the option of making your purchase in both fiat via credit card and with cryptocurrency. So what this means is that they are opening the gates to owning an NFT. Uh, they're making it easier because you could purchase with fiat currency rather than um, cryptocurrency. And um, it, it, they're doing this in a way like mystery pets. So it's kind of like a blind drop where you buy pets and then you could you know get different NFTs with different rarities. So when can I buy and how much? Sign up for our email updates to get the latest news regarding our opinion drop. Uh, what does SMP hope to achieve? As a news organization with 118 years of history, SMP believes that factual accounts of history and authentic historical assets should be immutable and that ownership of these digitized and tokenized assets, which are part of our collective human experience, should be decentralized. Our vision is that all guardians of history will digitize and tokenize their assets as artifacts. 
This includes media publishers, museums, academic institutions, think tanks, cultural organizations, art galleries, auction houses, archivists, our governments, and others. So what they're doing is they're trying to build a standard, an industry standard with regards to handling the archives and uh, the metadata and so that it could be uploaded to the blockchain. An interesting part of this is that the technology powering this would be built on the Flow blockchain, a decentralized blockchain built by Dapper Labs and designed as the foundation of a new generation of digital collectibles and consumer-facing decentralized applications. So this is very interesting. Uh, I haven't really done too much of a research, but from my understanding is that when you want to put something on a blockchain um, that you want to preserve, you could do it through maybe decentralized storage services like Arweave or maybe even Filecoin. And so them partner doing with Flow, um, it is interesting because it could possibly help them lower the gas fee that is on Ethereum. But um, it, it is an interesting approach, I would say. And this is, they do have a white paper and it's pretty much, it's very detailed. And from what you can see is, um, so the rationale is pretty much similar to what I just shared with you. Um, so this is what the NFT possibly would look like, which is like the uh, special pack. Um, so it has a metadata standard and smart contract for artifacts and then artifacts by SMP tokenized media asset. Okay. They would be the first use case of the standard. And then there will be a marketplace where they could trade these, um, archives of NFTs. The reason why I think this is very exciting is that, okay, as you can see, there's different mockup and different rarities of these archives. So I'm not sure if you could merge them and then make it into a high rarity uh, NFT, but we'll have to wait until they launch the drop. So feel free to go to the website, which is linked in the description below and sign up for the latest news. So they have basic thematic drops. So it's kind of like collectibles, like card collectibles that you can have. Uh, so basically 1997 because 1997 is the handover in Hong Kong. So this is kind of like a, a landmark period, a milestone here in Hong Kong. And um, one of the things that I find very interesting is that they do have someone on their board, which, you know, works on the uh, NFT standard, metadata standard. And one of the people on board is actually Yasu yeah, from Animoca Brands. So it means that they have been working with other companies to um, set the standard for, you know, archiving these uh, historical moments onto the blockchain. I'm trying to find, you know, ah, here it is. So as you can see, um, Gary Liu, which is the uh, CEO of South China Morning Post, is part of this uh, council of experts that will be, you know, advising this project. And then you also have Claire Shai, who is the file, part of the Filecoin Foundation. And uh, oh, someone from Christie's as well, the president of Christie's. Um, yeah, and what I was saying is the actual chairman of Animal Cup brand is also here. This is an indeed very interesting attempt by SMT to enter into this space and to set a new standard uh, because in NFTs, there's a lot of new things, but in order to survive or in order for it to be interoperable, a standard must be created. So this is actually not SMT's first rodeo into crypto or blockchain because in the past, uh, they have worked with Animoca brands to, you know, uh, to partner with Sandbox to create cultural experiences for the metaverse. So, uh, just this news was actually within this year in July. So that is four months before they have actually partnered with Sandbox to create, to buy a plot of land and to develop local Hong Kong experiences within this plot of land. This is actually not a new thing. Um, them working with any Mocha brand or having Yasu on board with setting the metadata standard is definitely not a new thing for them because they have been planning something and it is really exciting, especially with Sandbox Alpha launch coming up. Uh, as someone who's, you know, who grew up in Hong Kong, I'm really excited to see what this means and how we could experience Hong Kong in the metaverse. So talking about the metaverse, um, this is the map of Sandbox. You can see this is SCMP. And uh, the interesting news this week is that actually Adidas have decided to buy a plot of land as well and to develop their metaverse. So um, what happened was that Adidas decided to, you know, they announced uh, a tweet, which is like we partnered with Coinbase, but they didn't say much, uh, probably nothing. And, um, and then at the same time, they decided to announce that Adiverse anyone, what should we build together in the sandbox game? So what happened is that they bought a plot of land in Sandbox and they're going to develop it. Uh, when they announced this, the Sandbox token, you know, just went up parabolically because people see that a lot of big brands are starting to enter into Sandbox. I think this is definitely 
interesting uh, because as I said, um, traditional brands or maybe brick and mortar stores like Adidas are you know bridging traditional with contemporary, which is what is happening right now. And they're doing this through digital ownership, which is NFTs within Sandbox, and also providing a digital experience, which is uh, something where you could interact within the uh, Sandbox Adidas world. Same for SMP, as they're building a cultural uh, experience that is going to be in Sandbox as well. So these are interesting use cases that I would like to share. And there's another news that I would like to share, and that is movie studios entering into uh, NFTs. The first one is that I'm not sure if you noticed that uh, a new Ghostbuster movie is coming up. They uh, just launched uh, an, an NFT in the middle of this month. And so basically what happened is that they decided to drop. So there's actually two different type of NFTs that they launched. The first thing that they did is from November 8th to 17th, they uh, had 10 NFTs that they uploaded on OpenSea, which was auctioned out. And um, all of these were sold out. So this is Ghostbusters, Afterlife, and Nets. Uh, so floor price is 8 Ethereum, volume trade is 26 Ethereum. So these are all the animated uh, NFTs, and these are one out of one an animated NFT. So they were all auctioned out during that time period, which is interesting as movie studios are now trying to embrace NFT. And not only uh, they auctioned you know, these NFTs, but they also had a game where at uh, on November the 17th, um, 1,000 ghost trap NFTs will be dropped into the Ethereum community. Each claimable and totally free plus gas. So basically what happened is that you could get one of these ghost trap. And then on the next day, these mini puffs would um, jump, will be airdropped into your wallet. But uh, you do not actually own them. You need to use your ghost trap, uh, go to their website, which is called trap, in order to trap these mini puffs. Uh, so what 500 mini puff mod members will be running through the wallets that's all, that already have a mini puff and then you know you uh they will stay in the wallet for less than an hour and then you can trap a mod mini puff if you have a ghost trap nft in the same wallet as the mod member and once you use the trap it's gone for good trap back here more often you never know when a mod member will visit your wallet the reason why i'm sharing this is that and then there's actually a wall map there they have other developments um so it's not just a pop up pick NFT. They have wall maps where they will have different sections about um the people who were behind the movie, and then there were some interactions and sharings, which I think you know NFT holders might be able to have access to. So I think this is really interesting as well. Uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is that they're not just doing an auction, but they're trying to gamify it by having people you know get the NFT and then having another set of NFTs being airdropped into those wallet, and then you have to capture it with a ghost trap at a certain period of time. So they're making people work for these NFTs, uh, but it is indeed very interesting. And actually there's another NFT drop that I'm really excited, which will happen on November 30th, just three days from now, which is a major NFT drop by Nifty. And so what happened is that they will drop 100,000 avatar NFTs, Nifty's matrix NFT avatar launch information. Um, so basically what happened is that the Matrix Avatar will become available Tuesday, November 30th at 1 p.m. EST for $50 per avatar. So this is 50 US dollars per avatar. Fans could buy the avatar with fiat and or with cryptocurrency on the Palm blockchain. So similar to what SMP were doing, uh, a lot of brands, I've noticed that a lot of brands are, you know, not necessarily uh, minting the NFT on Ethereum, but they're also minting it on other blockchains such as, you know, the Palm blockchain, which is being used here. And for SMP, they were using the Flow blockchain. Well, it's interesting to see that they're now opening up fiat payment so that, you know, the general public could get involved. People without um, very sophisticated understanding of, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies or stuff like that. So they will be limiting their initial avatar purchases at 25 avatars per account per day. Uh, so that more fans could get it. The interesting thing is that these avatars can actually take part in missions. Okay, so it, it is not just a drop, but uh, there is a mission that okay. Once you minted these avatar, uh, on December the sixteenth, you could have a chance of taking a red or blue pill, and then after that, they will have missions for red and blue pill avatar to compete. Completing a mission will earn avatar holder special skill program NFTs that can be used to upgrade an avatar and move up red and blue pill leaderboard collectors will have a chance to earn ultra rare nfts by climbing up the leaderboards 
And finally, the Matrix NFT avatars were created with Epic Games Meta Human Creator using a number of randomly generated attributes to create each avatar. So basically, this is the website. Right now, what you can do, you could sign up and for the news. And what I find is very interesting is that they have partnered with Palm Studio. And this Palm Studio do look very familiar um, because what happened was that Palm Studio was the one that actually worked with DC for the uh, DC fandom drop in 2021, which is just a uh, look. Uh, DC partnered with Palm Studio for Epic Digital Collectibles drop for DC fandom 2021. And this drop was actually just a few months back. It's here. It's September 29th. So this drop was just two months in the past. So what I find interesting is that um, brands are actually working with different blockchain partners. For example, SMP was working with Animoca Brand, uh, DC Comics, and also uh, The Matrix Movie is working with Palm NFT Studio. Um, they're actually minting it on, you know, private chains. And um, one of the reasons for this could be because they're trying to protect the IP. This is not the first time I've seen this. Uh, I've seen another uh, project, Mass First, which is, I think it was HBO's Mass Singer uh, IP, where they minted with, <clears throat> they minted the NFT with another blockchain, which is a private blockchain. So I'm not sure if Palm is also a private blockchain, but the reason why they are minting it on a private blockchain is that I think that they're minting it there because first of all, they can control the gas fee. Um, they could control uh, their uh, IP rights because all of these are very uh, expensive and you know big intellectual properties. So they want to protect their ownership. So they would rather do it within their own blockchain. And the third thing is that it, it gives them the flexibility, I, I guess, uh, to allow people to open an account using an email, not uh, with uh, a, a MetaMask or a crypto wallet. So it, creates a way for the general public to participate as well. And I think this is indeed very exciting and it is very interesting to see this phenomenon um, that these big companies are partnering, partnering with other blockchain companies to help them get into the space and to, and it is possible that the blockchain could be less energy intensive. So they have this corporate social responsibility matter address as well. So as you can see, these are all recent examples of how movie studios and uh, newspaper companies are bridging traditional uh, business models with contemporary, which is uh, blockchain, NFTs, uh, through the, the use of digital ownership and experiences. For example, in the Matrix, it's actually kind of a game because you can choose the red or blue pill to evolve and complete missions to evolve your avatar. So all these are online experiences that were further enhanced through digital ownership. Uh, and I think this is indeed very exciting and uh, we'll see what the world brings, you know, what uh, other new stu movie studios or media companies would do in the near future with NFTs and blockchain. So uh, I understand the market has been down a little bit. So I would hope that you we all trade well and also, you know, just enjoy our time here um, and also to be a spectator uh, in this um, interesting time and to take note of it because this interesting time does not happen very often. And if we just look at the speculation side, uh, we are not really learning or we're not really embracing this historic moment of digital ownership. So I hope we all live life non-fungibly and that's it for today's show. I, I'm Non-Fungible TC, your host, and thank you very much.